catch up. Yeah, totally. All right, so we're recording now. So everybody in the future, I'm Drew. I'm in the very three awesome. And then who's all who's all there? Is that, are you Cade? Yep, I'm Cade. Okay. And we have Leo. He's out of the camera, but he's here. There we go. Cool. All right. Well, then, yeah. Let's uh, let's go ahead and um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off those cords. So let me let me grab a little hot end that we can kind of like walk, I can walk through with you. So I can go through the same steps, go through the exact same one. So, all right. So we've got these little cords right here. So we're going to use the little screwdriver and we're going to undo this one right here with a little Phillips. And then on the bottom here, there is what's called a grub screw. And that's what's holding in these red wires. These red wires are the heater. So you'll use the smallest Allen wrench. There's a little hole right here that you should be able to see. Um, or you can take the rubber off. If, I think yours has a rubber thing on it. Um, and then you'll be able to see it. And you undo that and then you can pull this one out. So we need to take out these old, these cords from the old hot end. That's going to be the first thing we do. You might go over there and look by that computer over there. Right on, yeah. That should What's be a little screwdriver. Um, tr we're trying to get a screwdriver. Oh, okay, cool. So. So we're just kind of loosen that one and then really carefully and delicately we'll pull these clear wires out if this right here we don't want to damage this little glass end of these where these two wires come together it's really important because if we damage it we'll have to redo it we'll have to add a new cord and then let me get the tiniest allen wrench here which is a 1.5 millimeter and then put that in there. Oops, actually, that's a little bit bigger. There it is. There's a the 1.5. And then you should be able to just kind of loosen it. And then those are both pulled out. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Okay. That ends off. So did you get those two wires out of the old one? Yes. Okay, cool. So then now we're going to put the new one on our, um, let me swivel this around here. Whoop. We're going to put the new hot end, we're going to attach it to our gantry. So I see your shroud is already off, which is fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go That's ahead and start. get those little bolts that came with it. And attach the new hot end to there. And let me just kind of lift mine up so you can see a little bit better here. Whoop, whoop. That's it. There we go. So yeah, there's just these two bolts that, that just holds it in there. And we're gonna reattach it. So they're kind of like long. You need to be the same. You guys have those? Yeah. You, you're more important than I am. Y'all think you have them? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think, I think cool. those are them. Yeah, they should be like the longest ones. So that's what we'll get we'll get it attached on here. And if they have a little washer, then that's awesome. Um the little washer will go on. Washers. Yep. Because that just kind of keeps the head of the um the bolt away from the heat sink. Because this is what cool. So you want me to get it? Come on. And they just go in right there. There's two little holes. You'll see the only two spots, they're kind of like sticking out. And it looks just like mine. So you have kind of a tap one there. That one, yep.
Okay. That so far, so good. All right, awesome. So then now we're going to take these old connections that we have, and we're going to put them on the new um, hot end. So we can go ahead and make sure your printer's unplugged too while we're doing this, since we're playing around with, with electricity here. So you can take this part off, the silicone part off, okay. and then you'll be able to get in from the bottom to with the tiniest Allen wrench to, to get this one, because you'll have to loosen that bolt to feed this through there. And then this will slide in. And then this part, you want to be super careful with. So this, this part right here, it's going to go around that little screw. So you can loosen that screw, but don't take it all the way out because it's going to fit around it. And you can see there's a little hole underneath it. That's what that's, this little like glass kind of bulb goes in because that's where your temperature is. So you kind of feed it into that little hole and then fit it around this screw. And you don't want to tighten this screw super tight. You only want to get it to where it's holding the wire because if you tighten it too tight, it can break the wire connection. So you just get it until it's just holding the wires and that's good. You don't want to crank it because if it cracks those wires, we're going to have to put a whole new thermistor wire in there and it's really delicate. So, just so you know. You can kind of see how it's like that. You need me to hold it? You might have to. Here in a minute. Okay. It might be easier to get the heater core in there first, the red wires that heat it up, and then tighten that first. And then kind of make sure that this end is pushed all the way flush with the end, the end of the heater core. And it's not kind of like sticking out or anything like that, because that's just going to dissipate heat and it won't heat up like it needs to. In there. Okay, all well, that's done now. Got it. You got it both in there? Yep. Sweet. Okay, so then let's put the little silicone thing back on there. Because that is really important because it holds all the heat in and it allows it to, to maintain its temperature. So that little silicone thing is really useful. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put the fan shroud back on and make sure those wires are all on the side and nothing's like pinched or anything like that when we get it back on there. Did the label give you a hand on that side? You might here in a minute to hold this. And I like to get one of them but not tighten all the way, just kind of in there to hold it. And then you can get the other one to get it to get it snug. So just like a little bit tight, just so it's kind of holding it, because it's going to wiggle. So then once you get it kind of just held on there, then you can kind of align the second hole and then tighten it. Maybe that uh -oh. fall too. Let's see it. Uh -huh. And then get them both nice and snug. That's a little much. Using short ones.
All that is finished. Sweet. Okay, so then now we need this little tiny wrench. You guys have this little tiny one? Yeah. It should, should be in like the bag of all your tools and stuff like that. Real small. This one, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, so this is what we're going to use with the nozzle. So now what we need is we need to get the white tube, or blue, whichever one it is. This is the PTFE tube. This is probably connected to your extruder still. There we go. Okay, yeah, we can use that one. Perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do is one end of this is going to go into this part right here. You can see where mine is. It's going to go right here. And it pushes in and snaps in place. The other end is going to go into this. But here's the thing. We have to heat the nozzle up before we do this because what we need is we need the nozzle and this tube to be seated up next to each other. So if there's a gap between this tube and the nozzle, the filament will get all stuck in there and it won't ever print right. So what we need to do is we need to heat up the nozzle and then we're going to loosen it a tiny bit, push this tube all the way in, and then when we tighten the nozzle, it's going to push it up against this tube to make sure that there's no gap at all that's in there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, sweet. So let's go ahead and turn the printer on. Plug it in. Because I unplugged it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm plugging it in. Maybe get it going. And then we'll, once it's on, we're going to tap this button and then go to setup and then preheat soft pull, which will heat it up to 100 degrees, which is where the filament changes from a liquid to a solid. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, does that just pull off of there nice and easy? Because we need that part, don't we? She doesn't pull off. But isn't this the part we need? Yeah. Which part? That one. Yeah, you might need that you might need to take that one off there. Yeah. And if so yes. if that comes off, you have to push it down. You have to push down because those teeth are locked in place. You have to push down okay. and then pull it out. You might have an extra one of those somewhere if that one doesn't come off. <laughs> Eee, wait, I think I saw one. Right there. Is that it? Mm. Yeah, because here's another one. Here. There's just a single. Is that, that one? one? Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah, so what we'll do then on that one is just screw it into the extruder first before you attach the tube. So screw it into this and get it nice and tight while this is heating up before you attach the tube. And make sure that it goes in straight and it's not going in sideways so you're not cross-threading it. You hear what I said? That these yeah, teeth, yeah. you gotta push it. And then somehow. Sometimes those teeth get really locked in place, so that's why you got an extra one. So it's okay if you can't do it on. Other day. All right, got it in there? Yeah. Sweet, okay. So then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that blue tube, but before we insert that blue tube, we need to loosen the nozzle. So the nozzle is 100 degrees Celsius. So the boiling water is 212 degrees, um, but 100 degrees Celsius is 212 degrees. So we gotta be really careful because it's hot. It's hot as boiling water. So with this little bit, you might need to use a pair of pliers because this will get hot pretty quick. But what you're going to do is you're going to take this up and then this nozzle, you're going to stick it on here and then give it just a little crank to loosen it. So you can see right here and just give it a little bit of a crank, lefty-loosey, just like that, just like I did. A little bit that direction to loosen it. Whoop. Just a little, just like a fourth of a turn. 
And be careful not to burn yourself. There you go. Got it? Okay. So then now, take that tube and then push that tube into the top all the way down and push it hard all the way down so you know it's all the way against that nozzle. Push it all the way down and hard on there. Okay. All right. Now we're going to tighten that back up. And here's the cool part. You can see this little connector right here. You'll see this little connector rise up, which means that the teeth have like locked in place. So now just crank it back to tighten it again, and you'll see that connector push up, and that's how you know that it's seated. So if you watch this little thing on the top, you'll see as you tighten the nozzle, that will push up, and that's how you know that it's locked in place. That's interesting. You did. did you see it go up? Yeah. Awesome. And then get it nice and snug and nice and tight again. We're pretty tight? Yep. Okay, so if it's loose, then filament will like leak out around the edge. So that's why you want to make sure you've got a nice, you know, crank to get it all nice and uh, tight and to make sure that there's no gap between those two points. So once we did that, now let's go ahead and take the other end of the blue tube and plug it into this. And then push it all the way in and then make sure that that latch is in place too and it'll attach to those teeth. And you get it all the way in there. Get it? Yep. Sweet. And then now let's take that this cord here and then like zip tie it to this blue tube so it's out of the way and it doesn't get in the way of your printing and stuff like that. Or twist tie. Looks like it might be twist tie on there. Tape. However you want. Like you can see, I've got some tape on mine. And just get it attached. Perfect. Yeah, and that just kind of keeps it out of the way while it's printing. All right, now we are ready to calibrate our printer. So let's go ahead and clean everything off the build plate. And then we're going to auto home it. Come on. Those are sharp. Well, I cut the other one, it went real easy, but this one is not. There we go. That was an industrial strength zip tie. Okay. And then if you're using tape, make sure that there's no tape that curls around the bottom of your glass plate. Because if it's not flat on your metal surface, if it's got tape kind of buckled under the edge, then it's not going to be flat all the way around. Your nozzle is going to kind of like bump up. So kind of check and make sure there's no tape like overlapping on the bottom there. Your sides for tape overlapping. Yeah, yeah. Is there some tape like going underneath? The yeah, the entire, oh, yeah, this entire yeah. side's set up like OK. Well then, yeah, go ahead and take the glass plate off then, and then take off all the tape and everything that's on the bottom. So mm -hmm. like, just take the whole thing off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take everything that's off the bottom, because we don't want anything to be on the bottom. We want the bottom to be completely flat and a smooth surface. Do you want to get that other plate and see if it'll work? Maybe we can try. Because if it's got those little bumps, like as the nozzle's going, it'll even if it's adjusted, it'll just dig into the plate there because your whole plate isn't going to be set up like it should be. Well, we've got we've got the other one, so maybe we could just put it on. We've never been able to get this one to work. Okay. Well, very well. Take off all the tape then. Take off all the tape from the glass. To peel it all off. Doesn't this one replace the glass plate? It doesn't replace the glass plate because the glass plate still helps it to stay. Okay, flat. so you put this on top of the glass plate? Exactly, yeah. Okay. That's so yeah, make sure there's no tape that kind of curled under the edge of that glass, though. So like, get every single bit of it off. And then we'll need some clips to clip it on there. You'll need at least two of them to kind of hold that plate. I think we've got, in place. We've so got two. Okay, great.
fire in my heart. <laughs> And then make sure that that plate sits flat on the glass all the way around and you don't feel it like tapping. Because if you, if you feel like it's tapping, like it's bowed at all, you might have to kind of bend the plate flat back and make sure that it's nice and flat. Yeah, like that, perfect. Is it good? Yep. Nice. So it might be a little bit too close to in one part, clip. a little bit too far and we in another, and that's totally fine. It's moving it. You need a bigger clip, don't yeah. worry. Uh oh, baby clips. Because as the nozzle's going around, if it's a little bit too close or a little bit too far away, it's just such a big print area that that's okay. Like there might be some tiny differences in it in while it's printing. The big thing is if it ever warps up or knocks loose, then it's too far at that spot. And if it digs into the plate or it's super hard to remove, then that means it's too close in that spot. And we'll kind of go through that here when we calibrate it. So here's one at that size. We'll just see if Yeah, make sure those clips don't get in the way when it moves from side to side either. So I'm not going to put the clips on the front and the back. Yeah, like that on the front side. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Clips okay. So then let's auto home it again. So tap the button and then set up and then auto home. And then when it stops moving, we'll be ready to calibrate it. So do you guys normally use a piece of paper or do you visually look at it when you calibrate it? Paper. Yeah, paper most of the time. Okay, so when we once it stops moving, we'll tap the button and then we can say set up, disable motors, and then let's align the motor above the first knob here. And then you can either use a folded piece of paper or by just looking, and get it just to where it's barely, barely not touching. So you want to get it as close as it possibly can get without touching. So when we turn this knob toward the screen, it tightens and pulls the plate down. And then when we turn it away from the screen, it loosens the spring and pushes the plate up. So we want to get it to where it's barely not touching. So that's why I like to kind of look at it visually first to kind of see and get a hang of which direction we need to turn it to get it kind of adjusted. And you can use the paper if you want. And if you use paper, then you want it to be scratching quite a bit, almost embossing on that folded sheet of paper. Because that one sheet of paper is two tenths of a millimeter, and a folded one is about two tenths. Or a full, one sheet of paper is one tenth, and uh, a folded is two tenths, which is about how far you, really, you want to get off. It'll be dragging quite a bit, and you'll feel quite a bit of tension on it. Okay, like that right there. Feel good about it? Yep. All right, awesome. So then now let's move the nozzle to the next corner and do the same thing here and only adjust the knob that's underneath the nozzle and do the same thing. So I can I can visually look at mine. Here, I'll go ahead and grab a paper too. And if it, it's hard to put in there, you can push down on the plate because it's spring-loaded. And then I can you can slide it in between there. And this is still pretty loose. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it a little bit. I'm going to turn it this direction so it gets closer. There we go. Go a little bit more. 
a little bit more. There we go. Now it's dragging quite a bit. Oops, came out. Yeah. So you want to see it like scratching and like embossing on the paper. That's good. Can you feel quite a bit of tension? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, then let's go ahead and pull it forward. And then we'll do the same thing for this one right here. Maybe a little bit just a tad. So we're not pulling the. You kind of get that one adjusted. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but we're getting it pretty close in the ballpark. And then we get this one right here. We should be able to fill that one back. And then do the same thing. And then once you go around once, go all the way around again. So we're going to go around twice to make sure that it's all calibrated like it should be. Because now this one is a little loose, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten it a little bit. And it's important to go all the way around either visually or with paper and not to switch back and forth. So we've done the same method with all four of the knobs. Because all four of the knobs adjust the plane of the filter as it's moving. William, when he gets it in there, you try it. You see how, you, how it feels. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around the paper just a little bit. So we want it to be just far enough away of that folded sheet of paper. That's why you want it to be scratching quite a bit. Because that's the distance, that folded paper. The calibration is like 90% of the 3D printing. Mm -hmm. This is where our problems are always. It's tricky, for sure. Okay. So they're all done. Okay, yep. awesome. So let's print a text print then, and then we're going to do what's called an auto, or uh, excuse me, we're going to do what's called hot level. We're actually going to adjust these knobs while it's printing. And that is the best way to get a good mm -hmm. first layer. Have you guys ever done that before? Yep. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So that's what we're going to do now. So the, the first thing that we want to do is we want to get a print that we know is sliced correctly. So um, we have test prints that are on here, or you can do a print that you have if it's sliced with the A31 profile, but we want to make sure that it's the correct profile. So our, what version of Cura are y'all using? I think we were set on 4.4 when we left. Okay. That was the last time we sliced something. We want to use 4.3. Um, that's the best one that works with the A31. There's kind of a bug um, in the newer one that's not fixed yet. So 4.3 is the best version to use for the A31, for the large one. Okay. So we can also just print one of the test prints that's on there. If you put the SD card in there, we can just print one of those today. And then I'll send you the link for 4.3 so you guys can download it. Oh, that's sweet. So you have the SD card in the printer? Yeah, we have an SD card in it, yeah. Okay, sweet. Well, then let's go ahead and tap the button in there. No, no. And then go to refresh SD card. And then print from SD and tap that. There's no SD card. And then scroll down until you see a folder called test prints that should be on there. What the heck? There might be a lot of stuff in it, which is fine. You see a test prints folder? Way down in there. Do we see one or not? No, we don't have one on this one. Okay. Well, I can send you, let me just send you the, uh, the SD card right now. 
in the chat. Are you on a computer or are you on a tablet? Computer. The, um, the Zoom. The Zoom's on a computer? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let hey, me. We move the nozzle up and bubble it out. So we got to bring everything down. Didn't think about that, just... It might be level, but when it goes all the way down, yeah. it's up this much. Mm. Uh, I just sent this operation practice. Let's go ahead and get that and put it on our SD card. Uh, Lou, you want to see if there's a pink adapter in that tower over there? Yeah, there is. Is the other card in that? Yeah. Is there a SD card in that one? I thought we pulled the SD out. Well, there's not one in here. Where? Oh, there, there's one in this. That's what I Yeah, and then just drag that calibration practice on there. And I'll share everything on that drive with you. Um, I'll send it to you an email after this meeting. And that'll have Kira on it and everything else. Because if it's not sliced properly, then it's, it's not going to print right. We are clearing this SDL. Find it? Yep. Cool. Let me put it in there and then we'll say refresh SD card and then print from SD and then scroll down and operation practice. Because what this is going to do is this is going to go round and round and round. So we can practice hot level. So we'll just tap it. It's going to heat the bed up first, and then it's going to heat the nozzle. Up. Now, did you auto home the printer before you're making new adjustments? Yeah, we we lifted it up before we adjust to the other side, so it didn't factor in the height of the new bed. What do you mean you lifted it up before the other side? Like. We had we lifted it up and we didn't re auto home it, so we have to lower everything on the bed. So, what, did you hit auto home before you adjusted anything on the bed? Because if we're just adjusting without hitting auto home, then that's not going to be at zero because you didn't set Z to be zero. You're just adjusting the bed, so Z yeah, has to I, be zero. I hit auto home, so it's at the home level now. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, let's, we can adjust it when it's getting ready to print. So we're going to adjust it while it's printing. So it's okay if it's a little bit off. We won't worry about it. So while it's heating up, once we tap on our print, let's load the filament in. So we tapped on our print. Yep. Okay, great. So then let's load the filament in. So we can cut the end of the filament into a point and then feed it into that feeder gear all the way through until it stops moving. I think you can kind of move mine up here so you can see a little bit. So we want to feed it through here and then here and then all the way through that tube. You guys have probably done that before. Had some practice with it, I bet. So we'll cut the end of it into a nice point to make it easy to feed in. And then when we store it, we have it through this little hole right here so it doesn't get tangled. So we'll take it out of that hole on the side of the filament and then feed it through here and then there and then all the way through. So you have to push this lever and then feed it all the way through to feed it through. And you'll see it going through this blue tube right here. Okay. Kind of move my stand around here, and then we can, I can push mine in there.
and we'll see we go all the way through. And then keep pushing it all the way, and you'll see it going through this tube, just like you can see this one going through. Right there. And then when it's all the way in, all the way to the end and stops, then it's ready. Loaded? It's slowly still heating up. Okay. So when we pull up and down on the sides of that gantry, like I just saw you do, yeah. you can loosen these wheels. Because if you pull up on this middle bar right here, it can cause issues. So let's test and make sure that all of these wheels are nice and tight by moving your finger across them and they shouldn't move at all. They should be stuck in place. If they wiggle, that means it's loose and that can cause problems with your printing. Is it loose? No, they're all tight. They're tight? Okay. Because when yep. you move it on, on the gantry and, and the X and everything, it should move this back and forth. It, the wheels shouldn't just spin in place. If they spin in place, then you need to tighten this little nut right here that looks like an actual nut that's between the wheel and the surface. It's called an eccentric nut. And that okay. tightens the wheels and pushes them together. So we kind of test those. Same thing with the bed, too. Make sure the bed doesn't rock back and forth. Does it rock back and forth, or is it tight? No, it's, it's tight. It's okay, tight. great. So that's another thing that we just want to check, just to make sure everything's good on it. So it's probably pretty close to being heated up now, right? Yeah, it's 178. Awesome. Getting there slowly. It's the first time it's been fired up in a Since long March. time. That's a day's off. I can smell it heating up too. Burning up the dust. Smell like the hallway earlier. <laughs> <laughs> There's 200. Oh, now I'm getting the can. Take the rest off this way. Okay, bed's heated. I don't know, we might mention um, this. Because that's the one wireless disconnected is for that. Okay, we are getting closer to 13. So it's going to do a little square in the middle and then it's going to do a square on the outside. We're not going to worry about the middle square today. We're just going to practice with that hot leveling on the outside. Because when you print whatever print you're going to do, whether it's a robotic gear or a prosthetic hand or a bracket or whatever it is, you're going to do this step. This is just a practice. So you don't want to run this program and then run your actual print. You'll do this with your actual print to make sure that that first layer is sticking exactly like it should. So what we want to do is we want to rub our finger over the filament when it starts. And if it doesn't knock loose, that means that it's stuck. And then when it goes around a couple times, if you don't see gaps between the lines, that means that it's close enough. Because if you still see gaps, that means That's it's what it's supposed to do. And it will work. Um. And it might take a second for the filament to start coming out, and that's fine. Now, if you hear a clicking noise and don't see anything, that means that it's too close. It's like putting your thumb up against a faucet. There's no, nowhere for the filament to go, so it's pushing up against the bed if it's making a clicking noise. Do you see it coming out? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Is it stuck? Yeah. Wow. That corner needs to go up. So we can kind of let it go all the way around before we make adjustments. But as I'm sure you know, with 3D printing, tiny adjustments go a long way. So if you make a tiny crank, like this one right here, I can tell it's just a little bit too far away here because it, it knocks loose when I rub my finger. Oh, wow. I need to make a tiny adjustment, Boop, just a little bit. Just like an eighth of a turn can go a really long way. 
He is still his adjusting wheels. Yeah. We just have these little wheels. Did you 3D print the adjustment wheels? Uh, no, these are just bigger ones. Are yours smaller than that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is that a corner? Yep. I think that corner needs to get cut. So how, how does it look now that it's kind of gone around a couple times? What do you think? It's stuck. Yeah? Great. Okay, out. so then now. We've got, we've got one low or one really high corner because it dug in. So that means it needs to go down just a tiny bit on that corner. So now we're ready for our kind of fine tuning. So we can take this square off while it's printing. Just use your scraper and take the whole thing off. Pop it off. And then we can look at it and inspect it because we want the lines to be stuck together. If the lines are loose and separate, that means it's still a tiny bit too far away. Yeah, or if you don't right see part of the lines, that means that it's too close at that part. So we want the lines to basically be a solid square all the way around. You can't pull apart. See how this one you can kind of pull apart here? Well, that one was it's a little too loose when it went around, so that's why I adjusted it. Oh, yeah. This one I'm going to adjust just a tiny bit more. Bloop. On this one, we can see it's still a little bit, it's not quite as dark as this is over here. So I'm going to adjust this one down a little bit. So this one needed to go up. This side needed to go up, but this side needed to go down just a tiny bit because it can be too far away or too close on different parts. And you can drive yourself nuts trying to get it absolutely perfect. So just get it pretty close. Because as long as it doesn't peel up and curl up on the edges, then you're close enough. And you see it sticking. What is your clap done? To what? What is your clap done? Y'all still got time? Class time? Yeah, do you guys are you guys supposed to be done with class, or you forgot? No, they yes and no. Uh, it's it's technically lunch. It's break time, so we're we're good to keep rolling. Okay. Cool. That is that looks good. It might be it's separating right in there. Yeah, I think that's because that means. So that one, is that sticking now? Yeah. Is it like a good square all the way around? Well, we're going to let it go around a few times. It had a few bumps in it. Like I said, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because it's a robotic hot wood gun. So as long as it's sticking in those lines, you don't see big gaps between them. When you peel it off and it's pretty much a square and you take the whole thing off, that's what we're shooting for. When it's kind of one nice solid line all the way around. Yeah, that's, that's looking better. So you can pop it off if you want and inspect it and see. And it prints from the inside to the outside. So you know if the outside ones look good, then you know that it's calibrated. If you want to bring that chair and sit for lunch in that chair or school or whatever you need. So while this one's going, do you guys want to install the version of chair that you need? Yeah, yeah, just a tad. Just a bit. I think this is the first time we've ever used this plate successfully. Awesome. Something has something to do with us removing that glass. Uh, did we remove the glass? I think we did. Because I thought it replaced the glass.
just that. Just this watch the here. here. So it's just a little bit apart. Yeah. Cool. How is that one? All right. I just emailed y'all the link to Cura and everything that's on the SD card. So you guys can have all the test prints and the newest version of the user manual and all that kind of stuff. Sweet. What do you think? You feel pretty good about it? Yeah, it's looking a whole lot better. Awesome. So do you all want to install Cura with me or do you feel a little confident in doing it and getting all set up? I think we can get the cure installed. We've had to install it a lot. So. Okay, cool. So the biggest thing, and I'll send you, um, let me send you a link to the video too, um, that kind of walks you through it. You want to make sure you pick the 831, and then you have all the profiles and everything set for the like normal quality and best quality and fast quality. And it'll all be set. Because because you just want to make sure that you base it off of those profiles when you go and print. So we did have the fan on the side of the housing come off like the wires broke clean off with the fan okay so that's a cool so, fan on the side yeah, yeah. so, so do you, can you see where the wires like where did the wires rip out of it no it's just it's like a clean cut just right on the side of the fan do you think you like can, can put the wires back in there what do you think like if, so you could try to take it apart and then try to put the wires back in there and connect them back into the little okay. thing. Okay. Okay. We might try that. Yeah, we'll probably. And then if that doesn't work, we can we can send you a new one. That's All fine. right. Okay. Yeah, I can send you some little connectors, and you can and you'll just put new little connectors on the end of those wires, and then you'll put them into those. Sweet. Oh, that would be good. So I think that's what's broken. Yeah. Yeah, right. Just a little fan to help with really long prints. You can print it out though, it's okay. That's good. Oh yeah, there we go. Yes, even though they're laying down super smooth. All right, awesome. Looks Woo really good. Thumbs up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, I'll share this link with y'all so you'll have it. Um, and then you can you can use it for um, going back for reference or anything else that y'all want. Um, do you want me to send it as uh, a link that only you can see, or, or do you want me to post it so anybody can can see it and follow along to help with their audits? Like, like publicly. We can probably do everyone then. You don't mind if I do it and post it publicly on our channel? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I'll send this link to you guys when it gets uploaded then. And then uh, if you need anything at all, just reach out to us. Um, you got you got our email, our contact, and everything else. And uh, good luck, pretty friends. All right. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one. Uh, you too.